Hey everyone, it's Kathleen Ems here, and today I am here with three topics for viewer and Angel Arts to talk about our most anticipated games of 2015. I thought this would be a really cool collab video because I have a couple of games that I'm looking forward to playing, but I thought it would be interesting to get some different opinions on games that are coming out this year and what is exciting for 2015. So I'm gonna go ahead and introduce my YouTube friends, starting off with Three Topics Reviewer. Um, just explain your channel and what your channel's about. Okay, um, well, my name is Brian. Uh, my friends call me Brian. Uh, I've been doing this for three years, and my channel pretty much I talk about three topics, which is movies, video games, and whatever anyone wants me to really talk about. Awesome. Okay, uh, your turn, Hark. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Angel Arts. My, uh, I do Let's Plays on my YouTube channel, uh, mostly work predominantly on story-based games, uh, like Bioware games and Telltale games. Uh, I also am currently running a bunch of tabletop campaigns that I post on video a bunch of times. Uh, I love analysis videos, Let's Talk. Kathleen has been in a number of our Let's Talk, especially with The Walking Dead. So really anything and everything that has to do with analytical, thought-provoking things with video games that obviously include story. And I happen to be a gay, openly gay gamer, which is a little blurp at the end. Not the emphasis of my channel, but some of my games, uh, my Let's Plays are what I call gay Let's Plays, um, which a lot of people have uh, have become really popular. So, hmm. Yeah, look at just, just look at your background. I mean, that says it all. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> it's awesome. awesome. You have something from Heavy Rain. You've got a Nor picture of Norman, and you have the mm. you have, you have little origami. So that's yeah, cool. Norman Jaden. Love Norman. Love me some Norman. <laughs> Norman. <laughs> Love Norman. Yes. He's my one. <laughs> okay, so I want to start off. Let me switch to me. I want to start off by talking about a game that's coming out next month, um, <laughs> and I want to start talking about this game. First, because, well, it's coming out next month, and also because there's been so much discussion about this game. So many people are already writing it out as a failure, <laughs> and that is oh. The Order 1886. Huh. Now, oh. I'm looking forward to this because it's a steampunk game, and I love steampunk things. And even though the trend was a little bit too intense for a while, I think that it's nice to have a comeback um, it's also about uh, these hybrid beings that are kind of like werewolves, kind of like zombies, which I is interesting. Like, I, I heard they're fishy lichens. Fi oh, they're lichens, called. yeah. Okay. Um, so maybe those of you that are into like lichen stuff know a little bit more about that. Do you know anything about that, Brian? Or uh, that's all I've really heard is to just lichens. Apparently, uh, they're kind of like the lichens from uh, the Underworld, Underworld series. Yeah. So they're so conscious that they, you know, they're intelligent. So, yeah. For, 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 for those of us, oh, yeah, sorry. For for those of us who don't know what lichens are, can you give give us a quick definition <laughs> of them? <laughs> um, I, I okay, I'll, okay. There's a difference between a werewolf and a lichen, from what I know. People, you can use the same name, but werewolf. Oh, okay, gotcha. Can turn into werewolves, but can't control it. Gotcha. Lichens have total control of it, so that's okay. kind of the difference between a lichen and a werewolf. At least that's from what I've read about it. Okay, because I was totally as soon as you said lichen, I was totally thinking about like the moss that grows on trees. <laughs> so is it like wait, is it like the Last of Us? Because I didn't think that's what it was when I first read about it, about the game. <laughs> Yeah. Well, this is a um, PS4 exclusive, and I've already pre-ordered it. It comes out February 20th, and the gameplay has looked extremely promising, and I think um, a lot of people are worried about it because 
there were so many disappointments from last year. So, mm. you know, when something looks extremely promising, people kind of are a little bit hesitant to go onto the bandwagon, especially after the disappointments of last year. <clears throat> Watch dogs. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, do you guys know anything about the game, or...? Um, well, I would just like to say that not only have I pre-ordered it, uh, I'm already spending $160 getting the premium edition. Oh, so. wow. Yeah. And I'm, I'm very much looking forward to this because from what I've seen of it, I've heard that it's not going to have multiplayer, which I'm perfectly fine with, and it's not going to have co-op, which is something I would have liked. But the fact that it's going to be only single player means that its greatest strength has to be its story. Yeah. And anytime you have a great story, even if they've set the campaign maybe six or eight hours, that's an automatic buy from me because that's what I value more than anything in any game. Exactly. I, I think one of the things that really interested me in the game when I was first reading about it is the, the universe was really cool. Um, never mind the, not just the steampunk uh, motif that goes with it because that's something that I've always been tr interested in but just that it's an alternate history of London and just the idea that it's got um, that it's got the um, like the knights of the round table yeah the way that they the, yeah. the way that they name each of the characters they're like knights right. from yeah. you know back in King Arthur you know the King Arthur type period so it sort of has that fantasy feel with it but mm -hmm. it's modern and then throw in well werewolves into it I don't know, the whole concept itself just seemed really creative, and I just was curious about how that was all going to play out in a story. Yeah, yeah. Um... I have a question about it, though. Okay. Sure. Um, because I, I don't know if you guys are, have seen footage of, of the gameplay, but are you just... Kick I know that there are four main characters, and are you just... Uh, controlling one of the four, or do you switch off between the four? Uh, from what I, from what I've seen in a couple conventions, uh, you, there are certain sections where you be will be playing as certain characters. So there's not just one single character. So like one, you'll play as like the leader guy, and then another mission you'll play as the the female, and then another mission you'll play as another character. But that's just from what I've heard. Uh huh. Okay. I I think that would be interesting, like getting those. Different points of views because it it has a it has a um, I want to say Game of Thrones Telltale's Game of Thrones kind of feel maybe like when you're jumping from one character to another so if if that's what they're doing I think that would be interesting yeah yeah and, and I think it's interesting that so many people are kind of I've heard so many complaints that this game is gonna suck and I feel like you can't really know until you actually play it. You know, I, I've heard people throw out some of the craziest ideas about how it's going to suck, and I'm like, how do you how do you know, if, unless you actually play the game, if it's going to suck? Mm. But, you know. <laughs> Are um, people just simply basing, basing it on, like, the previous disappointments, like you were saying, or did they actually learn stuff, like, learn actual information, this is what the game's going to be, this is what the gameplay is like, and then... They're like, oh, I don't think I'm interested in that. Like, I think I'm just curious it's what the just are. from looking at trailers and kind of assuming things about the gameplay and okay. not necessarily knowing what it's going to be like. So, um, yeah, but I've definitely pre-ordered the game. I haven't pre-ordered the, uh, the Ultimate, or what is it called? The Collector's Edition or whatever. Um, I was really tempted <laughs> The, ga the guy at GameStop almost talked me into it, but then I realized I'm going to be pre-ordering the collector's edition of The Witcher 3, which is like 150 bucks, and definitely going to be pre-ordering the most expensive version of um, Uncharted. So, oh, that's a good topic. Are you guys pre-ordering any, like, exp what are some of the other, like, or I guess we could come up, co get to that, but what is your opinion of pre-ordering this year? Like, did, it has that changed? Um uh, no, if it, the way I do it is that if there's a game I already plan on getting, if there's a collector's edition for it, uh, I'm already pre-ordering it. And uh, Kathleen, you're going to find this surprising. You know how there was a, a Batmobile edition and then like a Batman statue edition? Yes. I'm getting both. What? <laughs> that's like 
almost three hundred dollars on two. Oh games man, I didn't even think about oh. that, dude. I'm probably gonna pre-order one of those too if they still have them. <laughs> no, no, the oh. what I've heard the Batmobile one sold out. Okay, like, good. Wow, good. Wow. Get good. Then my wallet won't hurt too much. But like, this is like. <laughs> This year is going to be the year of pre-order for me. Because, like, I didn't pre-order oh, wow. any games last year. Um, except for Borderlands. But this year, I'm going to be broke, you know? So, <laughs> as usual. <laughs> what about you, Hark? So, you're gonna be, so, so, Kathleen, do I sense a lot of ramen in your future? Yes. Is that what you're basically saying? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, um, in, terms of, in terms of pre-ordering, I do tend to pre-order games a lot if there's a specific franchise that I, I've always historically been interested in or a company that I've been loyal with because pretty much with things like, like for example last year, like in Dragon Age Inquisition I just immediately like pre-order just take my money. Shut up, take my away, money. <laughs> Shut up, take my money. I mean same thing with, with when Mass Effect came out and there's just, there's just certain companies like Telltale Games whenever they come out with a game, and we'll probably be talking about... In 7 edition. Shortly. Yes. In 7 edition right here. It's, it's pretty much a no-brainer. So I'm, I'm a, I, I definitely admit to being a fanboy of sorts with certain, with certain companies and certain franchises. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, I feel like I try to make as educated purchases as I can when it comes to whether or not I should whether or not I should pre-order something. Yeah. I mean, I only have three collector's editions in total. I have uh, Bioshock, um, Mass Effect, and I have uh, Deus Ex, which is random. But I, mm -hmm. the person at GameStop talked me into it. I don't know. That's kind of their job, I guess. But, like, sometimes they haggle me into this stuff. But, uh... I usually don't get collector's editions, and I never get the most expensive version. Like, I there could there was a bigger version of the Bioshock one, but I didn't get it. And this is mm. the year I feel like now that I... I think because I was in college before and now I have a job, so I may just end up buying the more expensive versions of games. Yes, here. You know? Um, because that's just what I want to throw my paycheck at, so, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I think... I think you definitely should should be given the freedom to invest a little more on the things that you care more about yeah. with your money. So, you know, definitely stock up on the, the Oriental noodles. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what do you guys want to name another game that you all are interested in talking about? Brian, you can go first. Okay, I am incredibly pumped up, as you can tell from my shirt. About Phantom Pain, Metal Gear Solid yes. Five. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Although I'm a little bit upset from what they did last year with Grand Zero because I haven't even opened my copy. It's still wrapped. I, I've not even. So, it. can you explain to um, Metal Gear noobs? Ooh. You know, I don't know quite as much as you do about the lore, but I do know that last year a big disappointing thing happened with Metal Gear. Um, and do you want to explain what happened to those Well, who don't pretty understand? much all hardcore Metal Gear Solid fans got tricked into paying $40 for a demo that you could literally oh. fly through in about 10 minutes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I wasn't so much... This, this should have been released as a free demo because this is, a, mm -hmm. this is quintessentially the virtuous mission from Metal Gear Solid 3 in which it's like the first, say, maybe 20, 30 minutes max. I mean, that's really what they did. And it's just the fact that it was from Hideo Kojima, you know, Hideo Kojima can do no wrong, and that we were tricked into buying it. And, you know, this is like one of those things where I know it was a bad decision, which is why I'm only doing it once. That far, <laughs> I never have to do it again. But yeah. I'm positive that Phantom Pain is going to live up to it from what I've seen of it. I think it's going to be a te like a mechanical achievement. I'm not so much about story wise because I know the Metal Gear Solid storyline so well that there's really not a lot they could do story wise in this particular installment because it's limited to what they can explain. So, but I do think it's still going to be a really great game of the year. 
or yeah. worthy of the title. Yeah. And you know some fanboys are going to be like, oh, come on, that wasn't a demo. That was, like, amazing. Oh, but- <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, you can, it's like, you can get 500 hours out of it. Really, I can get 500 hours out of playing Tetris off of my phone. You can do that with any game. Just, like, sit in a corner and walk back and forth. And then Pretty much. That's, like, 50 hours right there. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know a lot of fans are really excited about that, and a lot of people have gotten on me about not being up to date with Metal Gear. Um, but it's, yeah, it's I need to catch up. It's it, 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 it's a pretty difficult uh, franchise to follow, especially mm-hmm. nowadays because the chronological order is such a mess. Like you can't yeah. even play them in order. It's like in in order it goes three portable ops, Peace Walker, Phantom Pain, Metal Gear. Metal Gear 2, Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 2, and Metal Gear Solid 4. And so unless you know the order already, mm-hmm. you're not going to know what game comes first. And that's mm-hmm. just that's, that's just bad. Yeah, yeah. That's what Wikipedia is for, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, Hark, what is a game you want to talk about? So there's a game that I, I definitely have has really intrigued me a lot because the premise of it is so unique to me. Um, and ironically, it's a game that I probably will never never be able to play, at least not when it's released, because it's an Xbox exclusive, as, as much as I am aware of, and I currently don't own an Xbox and kind of plan on... I'm more of a PS, a PlayStation kind of person. Yeah. But it's a, it's a game called Quantum Break, and I thought that premise of it was really interesting because it's a game and a TV show at the same time. Like... Oh. It's very story-based. The way it works, from what I've been understanding through my research, is is you play a story, and I think you play as the protagonist and the antagonist, or it might even might even be kind of morally gray, wow. whether uh, the antagonist or the antagonist. And it's 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 um so each of these two characters have like superpowers. It's sort of like a it's not comic booky. But I think, um, I forgot what the special abilities of the protagonist is, but I think the antagonist is a character who has the power to foresee, not necessarily foresee exactly into the future, but, like, determine if I choose this, this is what the outcome is probably going to be. If I choose this, this is what the outcome would be. So you can kind of see all the possibilities, um, which could probably help him make whatever decision he wants to make. And the idea is... As you are making decisions throughout the game, the game is creating your own personal TV show episode that goes with that goes with the gameplay. So, um, as if you were watching like the season of a show. So, wow. based, so based wow. on the, your decisions, so when when if your friends are playing this game, they might have a completely different episode of the show tailored based on the decisions that you make and the characters that appear in the the TV show and it's a live action TV show with live action characters um, they are characters that sometimes do appear in the video game portion like it's their it's their you know modeled faces and their modeled their modeled uh, faces will appear and um, I think I think that watching the show, the episodes, the episodic shows is optional, but it'll give you hints or clues uh, that will help you with the video game portion. Wow! So they, they, they fit together, and the whole premise of it, if it's execute on paper, it sounds pretty cool. Right. If they execute it well, I don't know. There are again are a lot of skeptics. Like, all right, on paper it sounds kind of neat, but are they actually going to execute? So. It, it, it's 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 very it's starting to cause me to sort of question whether or not I'll buy an Xbox just to play that game wow. if it really is cool. So I'm probably gonna wait. I'm gonna wait till it gets released this year, find out how people review it, and then if it sounds like it's it's a really neat, unique experience that they actually deliver what they promise, I might think about borrowing a friend's Xbox <laughs> and, <laughs> play the game, and buy the game and play the game. Yeah. So. Yeah, so um, I've only heard a little bit about it. Like, I remember seeing the trailer. 
at first, and it didn't have as detailed of a description in the trailer as you're talking about now. And now that you're talking about it, I'm like, oh, that sounds so interesting. Um, yeah. But I hadn't really thought about it. But yeah. maybe that'll be one of the games, because I feel like eventually I'll get an Xbox One, because I, you know, I have a 360 and a PS3, and I, I actually bought the PS3 before I bought the Xbox um, and I feel like eventually I'll get an Xbox One when the price goes really low. So maybe that'll be one a game that I eventually play. But um, yeah, that does sound really interesting. I don't know. Yeah, and and these these are all details that I've uh, that I've like kind of researched on um, several months ago. So I don't know how much of it has changed. Yeah. But it's 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 what I had heard from way back when. So yeah. the only kind of disappointing thing about games where your choices matter is a lot of times your choices don't really matter um you know like religion of choice yeah like even you know mass effect you know bioware games yeah a lot of times the consequences are the same and even like with telltale games i love telltale games but the ending for those games is typically the same just despite what decisions you make so um yeah yeah. Did you want to say anything about it, uh, Brian? Um, I'm well. From Quantum Break, I'm actually kind of fascinated that they want to do a game like this on Xbox because I've always seen Xbox as a shooter's console. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. It doesn't want mm-hmm. to diverse itself like PlayStation Three is. So it's a pretty significant risk that Microsoft is willing to take to make a game that does not require you to just kill everything in sight and shoot everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm intrigued about it, and, you know, I'll, I'll probably get an Xbox One, like, next month, because I want to play Sunset Overdrive. Mm. Um, <laughs> then you can tell us. <laughs> yeah. If you ever play the game, you can tell us how it is. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, that's... that 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 If they can pull that off, if they can actually prove to me that, you know, Xbox is more than just a shooter console, then that's more than a good enough reason for me to want to pick one up, because there's definitely... Another game, which at this point is an Xbox One exclusive, which you know maybe timed or maybe not timed, that's coming out later in the year. That um, I'll definitely, if it's not on PlayStation Four at the time, then I'll definitely pick up an Xbox One just to play that game because I love the first installment so much. And I think you two know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I. When I, I feel like I just bought my PS4, so I know, like, I won't be getting an Xbox One, because that, like, that alone, that was a stretch, mm, but, um, uh, yeah. you know, uh, I, I've, as much as I'm kind of a PS or a PlayStation fangirl, I think I, I don't have hatred for Xbox One or anything, and I feel like there's no problem with, you know, as much as I hate exclusives, I can understand it at the same time, because it's like... Yeah. yeah, you know, like, companies have to do that to get people to buy mm-hmm. their consoles. So, um, I mean, that's why I have a PlayStation, because I want to play a certain PlayStation exclusive. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the next game I want to talk about, I don't know if either of you know anything about this game or are fans of this game, but I feel like I have to mention in this because I'm a huge fangirl of it, and that is... The Witcher 3. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Yep. I am so excited about this game. I love The Witcher 2. I started playing The Witcher 2, and I haven't really finished The Witcher 1, but the reason why I love The Witcher is not even so much the games, it's the the lore, the books. Like, I started reading the books. The books are fantastic, even in the uh, American translations. And um, it's like Polish, but it was translated and it's fairly decent for a translation. So I don't know if either of you, I don't think either of you have read The Witcher, um, but I, I would not. recommend it. Really Brian, good. Especially Brian, if you love fantasy. Brian, you look uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, this is one of those situations where I don't know anything about Witcher. Don't want to yes. know. Don't want to play the game. <laughs> why, why do I don't you... want anything to do. <laughs> what, what? Why don't you want to know about it, Brian? Just out of curiosity. I don't know. It's the same thing with Borderlands. It's like I look at this and it's like <laughs> something's telling me to stay away from this. I, something. I don't know what it is. See, <laughs> you know, you know what's kind of uh, 
I think turns a lot of people off to The Witcher is the um, sexual scenes, like how mm-hmm. it's very explicit. Um, yeah. <laughs> and actually, that's something I don't enjoy about the games. Like when people think about The Witcher, they, th- they think like that's one of the first things they think about. But okay. I actually think the sex scenes are lame and really? I don't yeah. want any part of them. I think that they're totally directed towards a male audience and I feel left out. Um, Cause but, Kathleen, and I, yeah, yeah. I, go ahead. I, well, Kathleen, cause I'm, I'm just, I'm just picturing you sitting down playing the Witcher with your sister right next to you. And you'll, get to the, <laughs> you'll get to the sex scene and your sister will yeah. be like, do you like it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do she like would that? do that. She would do that. <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, yeah. That's. I mean, if my if my sister had watched me do a let's play, she would be like, "Do you like this?" <laughs> um, Your sister's adorable, by the way. Yeah, she is. Uh, too bad we live to so far you. apart, um, oh. or we do more videos together. But, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go back to your thought. I'm sorry. But I'm gonna I'm gonna sell you guys on The Witcher because the lore right, is incredible. Um, it, I feel like. The reason why I'm really excited about The Witcher 3 is because I'm hoping this is the game that makes Geralt a more diverse character and a more emotionally um, vulnerable character. Because that's what I love about the books is that Geralt isn't just this like cold kind of distant character. He has, Mm -hmm. he's really torn. You know, he has this surrogate daughter named named Siri who's going to be a playable character in this game. I'm so excited. And um I'm pretty sure she's also bisexual, which is really cool. Um or she doesn't have a label, but she did date woman in the uh, or she had relationships with a woman in the story. Um okay. so which is really cool. But he's like she's like a surrogate daughter to him and <laughs> his he's kind of like one of the she's kind of one of the few emotional connections that keeps him human because the the process that you have to go through to become a mutant is torturous like you you basically have to be uh under intense psychological and like and medical experimentation in order to become a witcher and it's really brutal It almost kind of makes you lose your humanity. And I'm hoping Mm. that they'll expand on that. Also, Yennefer is, like, the love of his life. And she's going to be in this game. So I'm hoping for more romance and less, like, straight-up sex, you know? Mm. Like, um, Mm -hmm. because I feel like it's just kind of dumbed down. You know, it's like most of the scenes are, like, a bad porno, you know? Like, the storylines are just like, what? What's, (laughs) like... Hey, the pizza guy showed up, you know, like. <laughs> Does it have, like, the 70s music in the background? Like... No, but I pretty much hear it, you know, like. Um... <laughs> but, yeah, so. Um, I'm hoping that this will be the game that kind of draws in Witcher fans that maybe had a problem, too, with the first two games as well. Yeah. So, yeah. That's good. It's good to hear that, Kathleen, because I do remember seeing some of your videos, your analysis videos on The Witcher, especially when it comes to how sex and romance is portrayed in that game. So if what you're saying is true, then that probably would draw some people who shied away from it in the past. Yes, yes. And I really hope they do Yennefer justice because I have a huge crush on her in the in oh, the yeah. book. Because like she's just like... She's like mm-hmm. off. She's like a bad chick, and you know, as you know, that's my type. So. <laughs> yep. 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 I remember. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me and Hark had this discussion about how, like, I have this thing for bad chicks, and it's like my weakness. <laughs> yeah. So. We all have them, though. We yeah. All have our- <laughs> Brian's happens to be a man in a bat suit. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, trust, trust me. Anyone who knows me, I, I'm trust me. Chicks are, are I'm good with chicks. Trust <laughs> me. I'm just not, I'm just in a bit of a drought right now because I'm you know I'm just lonely here in Vegas. Speaking of Batman, I think this is a real interesting image of him getting oh wow choked by Wonder Woman. Oh, dude. oh wow. 